morning. I'm Deacon Lisa from St. Thomas in Menasha. I'd like to welcome you to episode 28 of our podcast, where we get to hear from Shannon and John Walter. Welcome. Hello, <laughs> I'm Shannon Walter, and this is my wonderful son, John Walter. During this season of COVID, while my faith in God has not wavered, my prayer for those around me have increased greatly. What I found most interesting is how labels become such a huge part of our vocabulary. And for many people, the definitions are very singular and different from one person to the next. As a child, I was labeled a tomboy. I loved sports and dirt, but not dresses. As a parent, I've been labeled a few things like problem parent, which can have many different meanings. Um, while the teachers felt I was pushing too hard for my children, I looked at it more as of being a persistent parent advocating for my children. Now John was born with a few labels of his own. When he was two hours old, they told us he had Down syndrome. And my first thought was, is I'm gonna have the happiest child in the world. This is one thing you will hear many people say when they hear about the diagnosis of Down syndrome. But that is just one thing that comes with this label. And they aren't always happy. Let's make that sure that's clear. Right, John? Yeah. With John, one of his greatest strengths is his stubbornness. This, I believe, has helped him achieve many things. And yet, it's also his greatest weakness. John has a great fear of things like blood draws, IVs, and hospital stays. He had 10 surgeries before he turned 5. And while that could have helped him get used to hospitals and maybe have less fear, it did not. So when COVID began to shut things down, we decided to pull John and Noah from work and focus on just having him work at home. I felt it would help to keep us and them safe, but however, it became more than that as we learned more about this virus. I was watching the news one night and they were talking about how in England, the ambulance drivers were being told that if a patient is needing ventilation in the field, but had a cognitive disability diagnosis, they should not be treated. And that would be one of John's labels, cognitive disability. I can't imagine calling an ambulance and then them refusing to treat John. I then heard that some patients were needing lung transplants. And well, I knew this was something that John would not be able to handle because of his fear of hospitals, that he would not be able to do the rehab work and everything that would be required. I wondered if this was something that John could even have. And so I looked it up and I found out that in fact, John does not qualify for any kind of transplant because he is considered a less productive member of society. That statement hit me very hard. What is interesting is that we have elected politicians who make laws telling women they have to give birth to a baby with disabilities, but then an ethics committee deems that child not worthy to be saved. Less productive member of society. What does this say about society? Do the politicians know that these ethics committees are making these decisions? I didn't know. I've struggled with this for the past year now, as I watch people fight over masks and vaccines, being able to make their own choices while knowing that these same people are making choices for John in many ways. They are right. If we as a society look only as production, being how or who someone who will make more than what they cost, then I cannot argue. John will never be able to become what society wants. He will always be a less production, less productive member of society. The question has now become, how can I share John's God-given gifts with others so they can understand that there are other forms of work? John's smile, his goofy laugh, his ability to forgive you in a matter of seconds, and his ability to make friends. John makes you feel important, and his hugs are healing. 
I used to think I could change society's mind on things, especially when it came to John. But instead, society has changed my mind. My job is to love and show compassion to others, to be non-judgmental <coughs> and yet stubborn when it is in a positive way, to live simply and to play fiercely, to forgive others immediately and to pray for everyone. My job is to be more like John. The Lord has given me all of my amazing children to teach me how to be a better person. I plan on continuing to enjoy learning these lessons for as long as I'm on this journey. Blessings to you all. Can I have a hug? I love you, buddy. Mm-hmm.